All right, so your circle matters. Um, Ashley Jonathan. Ashley um, is, uh, you know, uh, one of our students. She's part of Kids to Career, and uh, she's also now a student body leader. Uh, Ashley, go ahead. Okay, so I just wrote down some general things that I think like anybody should just like pay attention to. So I said, be careful who you hang around. Um, a lot of us get like really distracted, especially when we're around people, especially our friends and family members and you know people who hang around on a daily basis. I said, like you know, look at like your circle. Like, are they supporting you? Are they supporting your goals? Are they, they tearing you down more often? Um, do you all have similar goals? Sorry, goals that you're like you know trying to work up to. Um, is this person taking more of your time away from like your goal or are they supporting you? Um, do they lift you up more? Because a lot of people, we get comfortable and we started like making excuses for them and like why they do certain stuff. I feel like your circle should be like your, your I don't say like your foundation, but like apart from God, but I feel like they should be lifting you up more than in tearing you down. Um, I say, are they for you or when you need them? Um, you shouldn't be like, you know, overplaying your part. I feel like if you're a friend of somebody, you should all be coming together and like trying to make like the best out of the situation, no matter what. Um, are you learning good things from them? Um, are they distracting you from like certain things that you should be getting done? Um, just taking time to really just look at the people who you're around really does matter. Um, it even talks about that in the Bible. Um, be careful when you hang around, even though you think that you might not be affected by the people you do hang around, you are affected in some similar way. Um, just make sure you're um, around people who are supporting you and not turning you out and yeah, not distracting you or anything. So you should be around people who are just really the best for you and not secretly against you. So actually, I have a quick question. Um, I, I know, um, you know, going through this journey for you is very important. How important for you was your sister's life uh, and her influence on your life? It was very important, um, especially the way I grew up. My sister was like the only person I really looked up to. Um, seeing her go through all her trials and tribulations helped me learn, like helped me learn how to deal with things that I was going through. Like she helped me with, she helps me a lot. Like she's like my mom, honestly. Um, just like, honestly, just, learning how she went through stuff and how she dealt with it really inspires me to do better. Like anytime I have a question about college or anything outside of college, she does help me. So yeah, watching Excellent. her go through stuff helped me. Mm -hmm. So Ashley, um, you know, what are you doing today? What uh, major, what school you're going to? So I am a major in nursing. I go to University of South Carolina Beaufort, the Bluffton campus. And yeah, I just transferred to the school and I love it too. Excellent. And uh, Ashley, um, you know, if you want to tell the younger self of Ashley uh, an advice, what would you tell the younger self? If you are like, uh, you know, going through the eighth grade, ninth grade or 10th grade, you know, uh, or, um, you know, getting ready for college as 11th and 12th graders, what would you tell the younger self of Ashley uh, to look for? Um, I would say don't compare yourself. Um, when things get hard, don't quit. Um, everybody goes through some tough things, but just don't stop. Believe who you are. We'll believe in what you can be and just don't listen to negativity. Don't take no as an answer, take it as not yet, and just try your hardest. And yeah, keep going. You're gonna see like a you're gonna see your breakthrough eventually. Charles Triple H just make you stronger and yeah. So I would say just let oh yeah, listen before you speak to. I didn't listen a lot when I was younger. I like to figure out things by myself. So listen to people, take notes from people. Don't think you know everything because you do not. <laughs> um, and yeah, just pay attention to certain stuff. Excellent. Ashley, and one last question. You are doing a nursing as a major, right? Yes, sir. What is your major? Yeah, okay. So in the high school, what, what are the things that you did uh, outside just going through the school and just like uh, getting your classes picked up? You know, did you do anything special to just like uh, prepare for nursing? I did read a bunch of books concerning my major. Um, I tried to figure out what kind of nursing I wanted to do. And um, I it was pretty much it. I did, sometimes I did like volunteer work at hospitals to see like, you know, shadowing, job shadowing. I did that to help me like really figure out what I wanted to do and to see if this was for me. And 
basically I was on I was on social media looking about like the day-to-day -day basis of what they do in nursing and the specific nursing I wanted to do and pretty much it. Excellent. I have a Excellent. question for Ashley. If you can uh, say one person who inspired you, who is it? And how did they, what is that about them that inspired you? It's my sister. Um, Whitney never quits. It doesn't matter what she's going through, how hard she's going through. She's going to get what she needs to do. And um, she doesn't quit at all. Even though despite everything that she's gone through, she always she always uplifts somebody. She always learning new skill. She always thinks about other people. And that inspires me to be better because that's my sister. And even though we don't get along all the time, she's like basically like my three one. She's my best friend, my mother, and like my sister. So, yeah. Amazing. Um, before we let go of Ashley and jump over to Whitney, her sister, um, you know, does anyone, any of the students have a question for a Whitney? Uh, Ashley Jonathan? I'm going to pull up uh, the chat. You can use the chat, um, you know. Uh, you also all the students, if you can throw, uh, you know, uh, type in your names uh, on the chat, um, uh, you know, so we know you were here, and that uh, we will also get that uh, Chick Fil A card uh, at the end of it. Um, so go ahead and type in your first and last name in the chat. Uh, but uh, before we let uh, Miss Ashley Jonikin off the hook, uh, is there any of the students have a question for Ashley Jonikin? Quite group, huh? Any volunteers or mentors have a question for Ashley Jonigan? Ah, you guys are very quiet, huh? No questions, huh? All right, no problem. I'm just going to let Ashley, um, you know, uh, thank you so much, Ashley, for joining and talking through uh, your experience and how uh, you you saw yourself through these um, tough times, um, and we wanted to definitely wish you all. And um, you being part of the student body leadership is just amazing, and I know that uh, the students will enjoy uh, being around you. Um, with that said, uh, do we have Lonnie Gask on the line? If not, I'm just going to jump over to Whitney. Um, Whitney. Are you there? If you are, yes, you I'm here. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm wonderful. Here. Um, Whitney Jonathan, we did highlight her last month, um, uh, um, her journey. Uh, and um, she's also one of the student body leaders, but uh, she's, uh, she is in Charlotte. Um, and uh, before um, you get to your topic, um, uh, like we talked about earlier, we want to have a separate session to just like a talk about the career opportunities. And we're going to bring in experts from different areas to come and speak to us. Uh, we had like a, a people with the nursing skills. Uh, we had people with like, a, you know, speaking skills. We're here talking about their career opportunities today. Whitney Jonathan is working on both the HR and PR. And so today she's going to talk about like a, what that entails, um, you know, uh, to do as a career. So I'm going to turn it over to Whitney. Whitney, do you have a PowerPoint that you want to share or you want to talk? To? I'm just going to just talk straight. Um, I don't have a PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, no problem. All right, go for it, Whitney. Okay, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Whitney. <laughs> so I really just want to talk about PR. So like as Mr. probably mentioned, I work in human resources. I'm actually in the HR development program. Um, but so I got my master's in that, but my undergrad, I actually got in public relations. So PR. Um, and I guess, so I guess I'm just talking, just talking an overview of what PR is. Um, he, public relations um, PR is essentially a communications um, career. Um, so it's very similar to marketing and advertising, except it deals more with writing. So if you're really good at writing, public relations is a good career field to go in. Um, it actually pays very well. I was trying to look up a salary for it, but um, actually, I'm gonna look up the salary real quick. 
forgive me. Um, actually, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. I looked that up last, but actually, I want to go ahead and actually give the definition of what public public relations um, is essentially. And that definition is. One second. Multiple definitions. Okay, so public relations um, is really a career where you create and maintain a positive public image for the individuals of group, individuals, groups, organizations where they represent. So essentially it is a, is honestly, you think about press releases where I think a really good example of this would be, I don't know if you guys ever, like if you guys have flown United Airlines, but a couple of years ago, they had an issue where they actually take someone off a plane um, and they blame the passenger for doing so in, really, in reality when they overbooked the plane. So with that, the PR issue there is that the CEO actually blamed the um, passenger on the plane for him not cooperating to get off the flight that he booked. So that's so PR actually goes in there and handles that situation because if you think about it, if you look at United Airlines, well, I mean, personally, when I first found out about that, I was like, oh, well, I'm not going to fly United because when they overbook flights, they're going to kick me off because, I mean, they're going to kick me off because they honestly do feel like kicking me off because, I mean, regardless of me paying for my flight or not, they're going to kick me off because they overbooked the plane. And the CEO blames me that they overbooked the plane. So PR really controls that image of how companies are represented to the public. So that's one of the, that's one of the reasons why United Airlines is actually I guess not the most favorable when it comes to flying. And so really PR there, just it just creates, like it makes sure, it, it, PR job is to maintain that positive image for people and how, and well, for companies and how they're viewed upon the public. And I want to, let me, I do want to look up the, the salary for that. Yes, there it is. So the average salary for a PR um, specialist in North Carolina is actually $51,000 to $67,000 a year, um, which is actually pretty good um, considering the average salary in North Carolina, I believe is $50,000. Well, no, the average co the cost of living in North Carolina is $50,000 a year. But I think you can agree that's probably more. But yes, um, I know that was a lot. Is there any questions I can answer for anyone or just anything else, anything else I should touch on? I just want to talk about it lightly and not too detailed because I don't know how many people are actually interested in PR. And also, I do want to mention, um, it's also a really good career field if you're good at multitasking and if you love to write. If you do not like to write, then PR is not the career for you. <laughs> Ashley, question for you. Um, you know, uh, today you are in the HR space. Can you talk a little bit about that? You know, what does a day look like for you uh, as a, uh, in the HR department? That's a good question. So actually, so when you think, so actually when most people think of HR, they think of just like the police, like the um, people police, I guess, or like, oh, I'm in trouble when HR gets involved. Um, so, but for me, I'm actually in a bit of a different situation. So I'm actually in a development program for HR. So I get to learn about my employee relations. So employees having issues like harassment or something, or like, an example of like when people are getting fired, I haven't actually had to um, participate in that part, but um, except for and like layoffs, you think of layoffs, HR actually tends to handle that. But so with me and my um, program, a typical day for me now, cause I'm in a rotating program. So I actually rotate in different departments of HR um, throughout a series of two years. So each rotation is about 12 months. And so my current rotation right now, I'm actually in HR shared services. So HR shared services honestly deals with all the transactions of the company, not like money transactions, but an example would be, so when you're onboarding employees, example, so say if you get hired on to a company, well, we like HR would actually handle your I-9 information. Um, we make sure that you're all set up in our system, um, like our employee system. So example, like Workday is something I work with a lot um, and putting work employees in Workday. Or, and there's other, there's other um, systems too. I know Oracle's a good uh, system that a lot of people use. Um, and then with that, I also, so for instance, like say if you have to travel, um, so like, I'm trying to give you an example. So say if you have to like travel to like, 
I don't know, like to like another state or whatever, and your company's paying for that. Well, HR actually is the it's a HR is the department that actually would manage that process. So for instance, like we make sure like you're actually you're able to travel and work day. So I actually activate a lot of travel flags for employees. I also um, make sure that employees are paid right. And that also more deals with payroll, but an example would be say if employees, I'm so sorry. I decided so sorry. One second. The one thing that I want to say is like, uh, you know, uh, I know this is the first time we are letting our students be the top presenters and they're learning uh, through all these things. Um, you know, my only thing uh, is that uh, um, as we move forward, um, we will, um, you know, get like all of our students to just like, uh, you know, take time, um, you know, to come to the table like this and present themselves, um, you know, um, and we will also get like, a, you know, the experts Diet. in that area to come and present it as well. Um, got it, Ashley. I mean, go ahead with me. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize my camera is coming around. It's like a somebody's, uh, it's not yours. It could be someone. Uh, I am. Yeah. Okay. I'm back. I apologize for that. But um, what was I saying? Yeah. So. I, I, so I get to handle like payroll. So when people aren't paid correctly, um, HR would actually have to handle that. So payroll is completely different from HR. But the part that I handle in, with pay is that, for an example, like so, say when you get pay statements in the mail, or yeah, say so you get, like a copy of your pay statement. I would make sure, or sometimes they get mailed back to the um, office. I would make sure that those like people get their pay statements. So because uh, some people like have to get a, a well, I guess a statement or a physical copy you can access online but people like some people like to have a physical copy of what their like what their pay looks like and also i get to handle information retirees so managing the retiree process when employees are retiring um from our company i actually set up their offboarding calls and walk them through what their retirement benefits will look like um and there's a lot of other stuff that i do so it's a lot of like transactional like all the smaller pieces um i get to handle Wonderful. Thank you, uh, Whitney.